What's up everyone? Welcome to the Mass Syndrome. I am Jason C. And before we get started, today is Memorial Day. This is a day where we take time to celebrate and recognize United States Armed Forces and those who have given the ultimate sacrifice to preserve the freedoms of our nation. Hopefully things are getting back to normal sooner than later after an incredibly difficult 15 months. Take some time today to remember our military personnel as well as our healthcare workers who have been on the front lines battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Take the time to slow down life a little bit, share a great pour with a veteran, and never, never take our freedom for granted. Cheers to you guys. Welcome back to Double Base, a special series where you, the viewers, get to pick two great whiskeys to put head to head to see which one comes out on top. I was in Kentucky last week and had the opportunity to buy the 16-year-old Old Fitzgerald Bottle and Bond, which was the spring 2020 release. This beautiful bottle is about to go head to head against Calumet 15 Single Rack Black, the popular source bourbon that's been putting out some high age statements the past few years, including a 12, 14, and 15. Let's get a closer look at each bottle then throw them head to head. William Monroe Wright established Calumet Farm in 1924 on a small farm in Lexington, Kentucky, after making his money in baking powder. After his death in 1933, his son Warren began to move the farm's business toward thoroughbred racing, and it became known for producing two Triple Crown winners, eight Kentucky Derby winners, and eight Preakness winners. Calumet also has 11 horses in the National Museum of Racing Hall of Fame. Calumet Farm Bourbon Whiskey is a label owned by the Western Spirits Company, who also produce labels like Bird Dog, Sam Houston, Lexington Bourbon, and a few more. Calumet is the label they wanted to tie to that amazing horse racing heritage. Calumet 15 is a sourced Kentucky bourbon with a mash bill of 74% corn, 18% rye, 8% malted barley. So we can assume it's Barton bourbon. It's non-chill filtered, 105 proof, with a batch side of about 19 barrels. Price, only about 120 to 130 bucks. Each spring and fall, a new addition to the Old Fitzgerald Ball and Bond series is released, inspired by an original 1950s Old Fitzgerald Diamond Decanter. The packaging and series honor both the history of the Old Fitzgerald brand and the historic Bottled and Bond designation. The Old Fitz line is well known for its distilling pedigree as the brand was first registered in 1884 and was eventually sold to Pappy Van Winkle during Prohibition. Now in 1999, Heaven Hill bought that brand and began distilling it at Bernheim Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. Today, we have the Spring 2020 release, a bottle at 100 proof. This is a wheated bourbon with a mash bill of 68% corn, 20% wheat, and 12% barley. This is bottled and bond, so 100 proof. By all indications, this is chill filtered. This one retails for about 200 to 225 bucks, but I've seen it in stores and on secondary recently anywhere from 600 to 900 bucks. Yikes. All right, guys, so really I've been looking forward to putting these head to head since I got that Old Fit 16. I figured there's been a few reviews for that Calumet 15 already. Uh, so why not throw it in a head to head against Old Fit 16, especially because it's, you know, almost half the price. And let's see how it fares. All right. All right. All mixed up. Let's go in. This is going to be glass A right here. And then this will be glass B. All right. So let's start with glass A here. Oh, this has a beautiful nose already. Now, I am getting a lot of oak here. I would imagine that these will both be pretty oaky, <laughs> being one's 15 and one's 16 year old. This one has a lot of cherry, a lot of cherry cordial. Almost like that Luxardo cherry syrup that you get. A lot of vanilla extract, ton of vanilla extract here, which I would also expect from a high age bourbon too. Hopefully, you don't want too much of that oak taking over. Oh. I'm loving the nose on this one. A little bit of chocolate here. Man, but a ton of cherry. Getting a lot of cherry on this one. It's it's not to the point where it's like a medicinal cherry, but it's it's like on the border, but it's still getting it's getting a nice like, you know, concentrated cherry note. Man, rich caramels, brown sugars here. It's got that slight hint of like that old school like leather. Mm. Glass A has a hell of a nose already. All right, let's go to glass B. 
All right, glass beads, a little bit more dried peanut here. Not as strong as a nose as I was getting on glass A here. Let's try to whip some more air into that one. Oh yeah, there's the oak. Oh, some big oak coming out of here now. Definitely getting the peanut, but I'm also getting a really nice butterscotch note here. That's what I always look for, a nice rich butterscotch note in a, in a you know, an ultra-aged bourbon. And a lot of peanut, black pepper, almost getting like a, um, you know, like a, uh, like a, like a furniture polish, you know, like a, <laughs> like a varnish that sometimes you get in an ultra aged bourbon as well. Good oak though. It's getting better as it opens up. This is, um, this is a beautiful nose too. Very balanced. Man, you put these noses head to head, guys. Oh. All right. All right. I think I'm ready to score this one. All right. So for letter A, which is the first one, I love the nose on letter A. I'm actually going to give that one out of five. I'm going to give that one a four and a half. I really love the nose on that one. Uh, B, it was just slightly less exciting than glass A. Uh, glass B had some great notes, some great oak, good leather. Uh, you know, that slight butterscotch note, which is my favorite. I'm just going to ding in a little bit for not being as potent as glass A. I'm going to give it a 4.4. So just trailing behind, but both very, very interesting. All right. So now we're going to go to palette for the next category. We're going to start with glass A. Let's see what we get. I'm hoping the palette's as good as it knows. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Holy cherry. <laughs> cherry Garcia ice cream all day. A ton of vanilla, a ton of like black cherry. Not really getting a, a medicinal cherry again. I'm, I'm like waiting for that, that medicinal like type cherry note, like a Luden's cough drop to come through, but it's really not happening. It's just staying kind of a nice, like cordial cherry candy. Yeah. The Oak is definitely there. Nice little spice, black pepper, some cinnamon. Yeah, it's all cherry, black pepper. This leaves a nice little tingling right on the front of the tongue there. That black pepper note just really just coming through. Mm. Man, yeah, cherry, just more cherry. <laughs> I can't kind of get through it. That's crazy. Like so much cherry notes, it's reminding me of some of the, if you guys have ever had the chance to have like an Eagle Rare 17 or some of like the really unique like Eagle Rare store picks, obviously this is a higher proof. Both of these are higher proof um, than you know the Eagle Rare store picks, but sometimes you get a really heavy cherry note and I'm kind of getting that in this one. Really interesting. One last sip, let's break it down. Good spice. It's very, it's nice and velvety too. Good oak presence to it. It doesn't overdo it. You get a lot of the cherry, the cherry Garcia, cinnamon, a lot of vanilla too. There's a ton of like vanilla extract going on in this as well. Nice rich caramels, all those flavors you like in a good, you know, especially ultra aged bourbon. The oak doesn't overdo it. That's a damn good bourbon. All right, let me uh, get to the letter B here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, loving that nose on B too. All right, here we go. Ooh, B has some nice spice. See, I, I was wondering if I was gonna be able to pick out the old fits, like the weeder, just based on the palate, you know, because weeders generally drink a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit smoother, for lack of a better term, uh, as a lot of people like to use. So smooth. All right, guys, I get it. This is just, it's just a delicious, just such a well-balanced bourbon. You have all the, you have all that beautiful oak. The differentiator here is the cherry. I'm not really getting a lot of cherry on B at all. Getting more of that, like that dried peanut characteristic, uh, along with beautiful, beautiful, like rich oak notes and sweet oak. The butterscotch is coming through. Again, your vanillas, your caramels are all there. A little bit more of like a slightly burnt caramel almost, um, which I really like. It's got like this smoky burnt caramel note to it. Another sip here. 
Yeah, a little bit of like that leather, like that varnish note I was getting on the nose is definitely coming through on the palate. All right, one last sip of A to do a quick comparison here so I can do my scores. This is like dead, this is a dead heat, guys, I'm just saying. This, this is kind of a wash because both of these palettes are so damn good. They're, I mean, they're different, but the same in many ways. They're both giving you that ultra aged like flavor to it. Whereas B is giving me a little bit more of the butterscotch and some of that, like the old, like the varnish notes and the oak without overpowering the sweet flavors. Um, A is giving, is doing the same thing, but I just think it's slightly sweeter and it's got way more cherry to it. Coming off this, A has a little bit more of a medicinal feel to it. One more sip on A. I gotta say, I think I, I think I like the palette slightly more on A. There's an extra sweetness level to it that's just doing it for me. Um, I mean, B is so good. It's just a different type of... The, I think the oak has overtaken the, that, the, the butterscotch note in B, and I want more of it, and it's just not coming through, whereas A is giving me the cherry, the vanilla, the caramel. And it's, I think it's also a little bit more viscous than, um, than, than B is as well. So I'm going to give the palette to A. I'm going to give the palette a... I'll give that one a 4.2. I don't think it's anything that blows you away, but it's really good. Um, B, I think I'm going to go with just a solid 4 for that one. Because while it's, a, it just, it's coming off a little bit thinner, but it's still very flavorful, very good dram, but it's just coming off. It's the, the, the thinness of it is what's kind of bringing down the score for me. All right. Rest the pal a little bit here. Now we're gonna dive into the finish. Give a score, you guys know I score a lot on finish. I, I like to make sure that every bourbon I try has a good finish, because it's what's interesting. So let's go to A real quick. A is peppery, it's sweet, it's again, cherry. You know what's happening, the more I sip this A, the more medicinal the cherry is getting. I felt like it was more of a sweet Luxardo cherry in the beginning, but now it's just, it's starting to get a little bit medicinal. I mean, not in a terrible way, but it's just, I don't know. There's a medicinal quality that's coming to the forefront, but I do like the, uh, the spice here on the back end. Yeah, oak, vanilla, cherry, little kick of that cinnamon on the back end. All right, I see you, A. A is good, good finish. I don't think it's a great finish, but it's a solid finish. I wouldn't say it's, um, you know, the finish on A doesn't, you know, make me want to keep like running back and trying this one. I think the palate and the nose does, but the finish, not so much. All right, let's go to B. Uh, see, B to me has a, has a better finish. It still has beautiful black pepper notes. I get that honey, the peanut, the oak, and that little like spike of like butterscotch, where there's original candy, right on the very, very back end too. Mm. It just lingers more on, uh, on B. A, I feel like goes away very quickly. You left with that medicinal note, whereas B, yeah, the B finish is just lingering on and on. Yeah, B easily, handily wins the finish. I'm gonna give A a finish of probably, doesn't have a great finish. I'm probably gonna give that a three, maybe a 3.2. I did enjoy the, the you know, I did enjoy the, uh, the, like the cherry and the vanilla on the very back end. A little bit of oak, but it was just a little bit, a little bit too fast. Uh, yeah, B definitely has the finish here for me. I think I'm gonna give B, I mean, it's not the greatest finish, but it's definitely more interesting than A. I'm gonna give B a 3.8 here. All right, so uh, let's tally up the scores and see who won. All right, guys, as you can see on the scoreboard, with a narrow, narrow victory, uh, Glass B takes it with a total score of 12.2 to Glass A's 11.9. I thought Glass A had it. It had the nose, it had the palate. It just lost me on the finish. It was a little bit more medicinal, wasn't leaving those sweet flavors I wanted, and it was a much shorter finish. Glass uh, B hung in there on both nose and palate, but really it shined on the finish. 
a little bit longer, a little bit more lingering. Definitely a lingering finish. The black pepper just kind of hanging out. The little bit of a spike of a butterscotch note definitely hanging on. Let's see who the winner was. This was letter B. It's the Old Fit 16. Old Fit 16 narrowly, narrowly beats the Calumet 15. Now, the reason why I want to do this matchup is because uh, A, I, you know, these are very, very close in age. B, I haven't gotten a chance to uh, review the Calumet 15, so I thought this would be a really cool way to do it, especially going against this Old Fit 16, just to see how good this Calumet 15 is. And it's damn good, I'm telling you guys. The beauty about Calumet 15, if this is available in your area, it's only about 120, 130 bucks for a 15 year old, which really makes it probably one of the best values I've seen, you know, in a long time. Now the Old Fitz 16, you know, people chase this and hunt this because not only is it a delicious bourbon, but it's in this beautiful decanter style bottle uh, from Heaven Hill, which also, you know, adds to the collectability of it. But I mean, if you guys can't get this or never see this, this Calumet 15, I gotta tell you, surprised me. If you like cherry notes in your bourbons, if you like a lot of you know, rich cherry, sometimes a little bit medicinal, butterscotch, definitely oak, great balance, absolutely no bitterness at all, grab that Calumet 15 for the price because I don't think you'll be disappointed. The Old Fit 16, if you ever see this at retail or if you're lucky enough to get to Heaven Hill and they do have this every now and again, uh, or if you see this anywhere for a decent price, like I said, the price on these old fitzes have been going higher and higher, especially from a secondary standpoint and from just you know a store standpoint, because uh, there's so much want for these, especially with these glass bottle. But especially also a 16 year old, high age statement, people are gonna really clamor for this one. But there is some really great whiskey out there. This is why I wanted to do this head to head. You can't get the old fit 16. Grab this Calumet 15, it's really, really good. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Double Bass as we brought it back, putting Calumet 15 versus Old Fit 16. Calumet 15 is a really delicious bourbon. Very impressed with this one. Good job, Western Spirits. Uh, Old Fit 16, though, is definitely a hitter. Very, very rich oak, sweet, a little bit of butterscotch, long lingering finish, especially for only a 100 proof weeder. Very, very impressed with the finish on that one. Uh, if you enjoyed the head-to-head, -head, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you thought of the head-to-head. -head. Uh, if you haven't yet, guys, definitely take some time today. Share a pour with a veteran or a uh, you know frontline healthcare worker. If you can't, just uh, you know definitely honor them. Share a pour with your family, your friends. Raise a glass to them. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody. Happy Memorial Day.